Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Conversations with Candace. I'm Candace, and we're going to be conversing today. Uh, if you've been on my page for a while, or if you're new here, you've seen that I've done a braidless crochet almost every two to three weeks for like the past year. It is something that I'm really like. I'm really really into because I don't know how to braid, but I want my hair to be cute. And um, I found a way on YouTube to do my hair and try different hair in the process. So I did a braidless crochet video and it was quite popular and I will link that one here, but that one's also a year and a half ish old. So I wanted to do an updated version of the walkthrough so you can see exactly how I do my hair. This is also for my friends who say, oh my God, I wish I could do that. And then they never do it because they think it's super hard. Well, here's your 2020 updated video of how to do braidless crochet. Now by braidless, I don't mean plaits. I put plaits in my hair, but you can also twist it like loose twists. You don't have to do cornrows. And that's what I mean. No cornrows. So let's get started. Starting off with clean, dry hair, section your hair in at least four pieces. Some people will pull their hair back in a big bun and just tie it up in the very back but I find that that leaves a big bulky space so you'll see here that I am separating um, the back of my hair into four different sections I'm securing those with a rubber band um, sometimes I only do three sections but I have a big head and my hair is thick so it's easier for me to do four sections in the back and four sections in the front then I just either twist or plait all the way down to the end. I do know how to plait, so I do that more times than not. But I've also just like twisted the actual strands until I got to the end. I put a rubber band on the end, but I leave a little bit of space because sometimes when I'm doing the crochet, I like to take the opportunity to trim my ends. I am kind of transitioning to natural, kind of not, but my ends sometimes get split, so I use this opportunity to cut some off of the ends. When I get to the top, even if I know I'm only going to wear a part on one side, I kind of now out of habit will do a part on the other side just in case I feel like I want to flip it over. It's super easy to do, so I figure why not. But I always wear, I always have my part on this side and wear my hair this way. Um, this is my right, my, my right side. So my bang is always to the right side. Sometimes I will flip it and do the middle, but generally this is what I'm comfortable with. So this is where I make my part. I'd recommend if you don't know where you want to have a part, just go ahead and do two, one on one side and one on the other, or one in the middle and one on the side. I um, secure the front just like I do the back, and I also take the time to trim my ends here as well. Now, I don't trim my ends every time I do this style, but maybe like once every three months, I trim like a half inch to an inch off. Um, that just helps me keep my hair as healthy as possible. Um, and I know that split ends keep your hair from looking like it's growing. Even though we, your hair will grow at the same pace, um, the end splitting will cause your hair to break off quicker and it will seem like it's not growing. Now, although you don't have to have a weaving cap, I would absolutely recommend wearing one. Number one, because this hair is synthetic, and if it is con if it's uh, constantly rubbing up against your hair, it's going to cause your hair to break. But also, the weaving cap acts as another base 
for the crochet style to stay on better. It goes on tight. Um, it is, it's just easier um, and you don't have to fill in as many sections and your hair is not going to show as much underneath here if you do the cap as well. What I do is I put my cap on and then I push it back so it slides my um, edges back and keeps it like laid nicely. To crochet in the hair, you're going to need a weaving hook or a latch hook. I use a latch hook. That's the one that I know how to use. That's what I found at my beauty supply store. It's very easy. You just um, open the hook and close it. It is so simple. It's not something that it's going to take you a long time to learn how to do. Now, you can use any type of braiding hair for this style. Um, I'm choosing to do the tutorial on this hair because it's easiest to explain. If you have hair like this, a coarser, thicker curl, you can use less hair. You can use two packs instead of four or five that you may use with the looser curl, but also you're only gonna have to loop this hair on once, and that's gonna save you time. The reason why you only have to loop it once is because it's not going to come undone because of the texture and the curl type of this hair. This hair also looks like a twist out. I've literally been wearing this hair before and had people tell me, oh, your twist out is beautiful and legit think this is my hair. It looks like a twist out. To crochet, insert your latch hook underneath your weaving cap and your hair. You need to go underneath both of them for a secure fit. Insert the latch hook. Put the hair on the end of the hook and close it. Pull it through halfway. Take the hook off and then loop the hair. It's as simple as that. Another way to crochet is to use the invisible loop method. And what that does is it lets the hair fall over the loop part so you can't see the loop. And it looks more natural like the hair is growing out of your scalp. But the good thing about this hair is that you don't even need to use that method because this hair is so springy and bouncy, it's going to cover the loops anyway. Another option for crocheting is to loop the hair two or three times for added security. I'm showing you this here just so you can see what it would look like. But again, with hair that is um, fluffier like this, you don't have to do that. You don't have to loop it multiple times. It's not going, like, going to come undone. It's going to um, stay looped just fine. But if you're going to go with something looser like the Presto Curl or like Go Go Curl, um, or something like that that's more like a finer, kind of like a silkier hair, um, you're going to need to loop it multiple times. When you get close to the front of your hair, you're going to want to hide the band. And the way you hide the band is by looping the hair and either doing the invisible loop method or not, but as long as you loop the hair all the way along the band in the front, you will hide it and you won't be able to see it. It will look like the hair is literally growing out of your scalp. It'll be so fabulous. And then what I do is for just my part area, I cut just the thick part of the band in the front. I don't go really far back, just that little half inch 
of the thick part so that you can't see it. If you don't want to do that, just continue to loop hair in that area. When you get to where you don't need to add any more hair, it's time to trim. Hair like this doesn't take much trimming, but I would just recommend angling your scissors down, framing your face, and trimming slowly. It's going to take more work if you have to add hair. You can always trim a little bit at a time, but if you cut too much, you're going to have to add some more hair. That can cause you to run out um, or you know need to go buy more hair. We don't want to do that. So. Be careful with the hair that's already in your head and just trim it a little bit at a time. I actually don't trim much the first day because I feel like once I go to sleep and I wake up, I'm probably going to have to trim just a little bit more. For sleeping, I put on my bonnet and I don't put it on in any special way, but I do take a little wrap and wrap it around my edges because I don't add gel to my edges or anything like that. Um, I do add a little bit of the curl mousse, but not very much. And so I uh, like rely on that wrap just to hold down my um, edges so when I sleep, I don't mess them up. When you wake up in the morning, you may find that you have a little bit of frizz. So just take some time and separate the hair um, very gently. Any pieces that may be too long, you can trim them. And then you can add a little bit of curl mousse to define the curls a little bit better. This is a more coarse hair, so it is going to have some frizzing over time. So just pick up the pieces gently and trim off some of the frizzing, and that will prolong the life of the hair. Ultimately, you can wear this style two to four weeks, however long you want to go, without um, washing your hair, honestly. You can use a spray bottle with uh, vinegar for your scalp. Um, if you are um, feeling some itching or anything of that nature, you could be allergic to the hair. So I would uh, recommend taking it out. Um, but also you could just need to wash your scalp. So leave it in as long as you feel you want to, as long as it looks good, and you're going to be popping. For ringlet wand curl hair, I use about two packs of hair. Um, I usually always have some left over, so I save it for the next time. With any looser curl, you're going to have about four or five packs, um, and they can vary from $5.99 to $9.99 per pack. It can get expensive if you change your hair a lot, but if you're using this as a way to not have to uh, manipulate your own hair so much, this is perfect. Braidless crochet is for you. If you have any questions about this style or any other style that I've done, just let me know. I'll try to link below some other styles that I've done and hair that I really, really like. But until next time, y'all have a good day.